We live in the age of information. Humanity is more connected and interconnected than ever before. Soon, most people will have access to the internet via mobile phone, with the whole world at their fingertips. But this is also the age of misinformation. Information is manipulated, controlled, used to stoke tensions and hate, to undermine elections, to stop people vaccinating themselves and their children. So how can people know what information they can trust? A free media keeps power in check and helps to uphold democracy. Yet, right now, around the world, independent media serving the public interest are facing new and immense threats to their survival. There has never been a more important time for independent journalism, for genuinely free independent institutions that serve the interests of citizens around the world. The challenge is urgent and we need to act now. Hi, my name is Nishant Kalwani and I'm the Managing Director of Independent Media at Illuminate. I'm James Dean, I'm the Head of Policy at BBC Media Action, that's the BBC's independent media support charity. We work in about 26 countries around the world. Um, all of them are low income, many of them are fragile. We do a lot of research, we do a lot of talking to media partners in those countries. And we became more and more obvious to us that the business model problem for independent media wasn't just becoming more challenging or more difficult to navigate, it was becoming simply impossible. And they were saying things like this. Advertising for legacy media is falling and it has not been compensated by a commensurate rise in advertising in online. Media everywhere in the world is propelled by advertisers. And the current situation which is happening in Zambia, advertisers never pay on time. There's no law which compels them to pay. We have people who haven't paid us for three years. There's no freedom of the media if there's no economic freedom. Al Murbad is an independent media organization for the south of Iraq. Everyone knows it. Even though we have more than one billion views on YouTube, we only got $36,000 in one year from AdSense because advertising rates for Iraq are very low. We always had this assumption that if organizations could be innovative enough, uh, if they could be agile, smart enough, they would always be able to find a way of making good journalism pay. But as you saw in that little snippet from Iraq, if you generate a, a business that is creating a billion views, and if you do, then attract just $36,000 of income over a year, that's a real signal that the business model is simply broken. And that's been happening for a while now. And the more we've looked at this, the more others have looked at this, the longer time has gone on, the more obvious and the more catastrophic that market failure looks like, particularly in these kinds of countries. Well, frankly, we reached the same conclusion. Um, if you look at donors like Luminate, uh, who are interested in supporting independent media globally. The calls on our support are growing all the time. They're going to continue to escalate. The amount of money available wasn't even sufficient, was nearly enough pre-COVID, let alone um, now, given the economic devastation which we're seeing. We need more donors spending money to save and build independent media, especially where it matters most, where it's most threatened, which are low and middle income countries. What I've also been doing is advising the OECD uh, there's a group within the Development Assistance Committee there, which really focuses on how best to support democracy and governance around the world. And in recent years, there's been a growing appetite and a growing interest and a growing concern about paying attention to independent media, uh, online journalism, on informed society. Why was that? Because, because of concerns of corruption, over mismanaged elections, over misinformation, over epidemics way before Corona. Concern was growing, but the actual volume of, of, of disbursements was not. A lot of organizations, especially those kind of donors, didn't have a risk appetite, they didn't have a confidence, they didn't have the capacities, they didn't have the systems in place which were really capable of really scaling up support in this area. 
to the extent that was necessary. And as a result, we still see just 0.3% of development assistance going to this area. And I think by their own acknowledgement, that's too small. So an international fund just seemed to be the most obvious way of solving that problem. As we know, the, the, the democratic and development costs of media not being funded, not surviving, are immense. Power isn't held to account, corruption thrives, there's election interference, and so on. And, and yet, things are going to get much worse for media. The Reuters Institute estimates that news organizations worldwide will lose more than $20 billion through the decline in advertising and other revenues brought about by the pandemic. Well, that kind of loss would gut the journalism sector at the best of times. And, and these certainly are not the best of times. That's why we need an international fund for public interest media. Without it, independent journalism will continue to fade away um, and democracy will be permanently damaged. For it to make a real difference though, it needs to be big. Our uh, long-term ambition is having an annual budget of 1 billion US dollars. Uh, and we've got some really smart people advising us. So we spent a year consulting media donors and media support organizations. We commissioned a report from PwC, providing their insight on how other international funds had been set up to really look and see whether this was a reasonable and credible proposition. Overall, there is a general agreement about the threats and challenges faced by journalism and independent media. And this report has confirmed that the creation of the fund to help address issues that journalism and independent media are facing is uh, critical. Respondents have also stressed that there is a need to accompany a fund with strong principles. There is also a need to guard it against uh, siphoning off scar uh, scarce resources, and it needs to have strong strategies for good governance. So let me first talk about the mission. The mission is to support the development, sustainability and independence of public interest media, especially in low-income countries. And one of the key principles of a fund is that it's really important that it's not the donors who decide who should get money and who should not. And we understand that this is really quite a challenging proposition to actually decide who gets funding and who doesn't. And so the legitimacy of this fund is going to be absolutely key. And that's why we put a lot of work, particularly with the Global Forum for Media Development, looking at what the governance structure should actually look like. We've come up with a two-tier governance structure, a corporate board, and that would be advised by an advisory council. A key principle underpinning this will be diversity, gender diversity, and geographical diversity, with a preponderance of representation from the countries which this fund is designed to benefit. We're underway. We have some momentum. There's really two phases. The first is a setup phase where we establish an interim secretariat. We set up the legal structure for the fund and we're also hiring an executive director. That is going to cost about one and a half million dollars. We are actively looking for philanthropic and other donors to help us do that. During that phase, we also need to raise the money so that we can begin the operational aspect of the fund, which we expect will commence in uh, mid to late 2020. One really is about 60 to 100 million to test this idea. So this is where we've got to. The economic crisis has become far worse in recent months. The pandemic is being called a media extinction event by many. We're no longer thinking of this fund as uh, sustaining strong public interest media, but increasingly of rebuilding whatever comes next. We've talked a little bit about where the money from this fund will come from. It's not just development agencies in the philanthropic sector that we expect will support this. We need the tech community to step up to the plate to make this happen. We're in discussions with the large tech platforms as well as government donors. They all understand the importance of media, the impact it's having on elections, on spotlighting corruption, and now with COVID on life and death itself. We're really hoping that this increased understanding translates into financial commitments to the fund over the coming months. If we can get that, we can make major progress to ensure that independent media survive and thrives. We need your support to make this happen. Ask us questions, uh, improve the proposition that we've presented to you. Make the case for it among your communities if you can. And please do get in touch if you'd like to help.